Should we stop at number four? Should we stop at number four? Says Ghana just granted hundreds of diasporan citizenship. Does this spell disaster or a boost for the country? This came with a link that's going to take us to YouTube. We will watch the video as always, and then we'll comment on it. Unfolded on Tuesday, November 19, 2024, as Ghana made a powerful statement of unity and restoration by granting citizenship to 524 African diaspora members in a groundbreaking ceremony at the Accra International Conference Center. The atmosphere was electric as the recipients, hailing from various parts of the globe, were formally welcomed into the Ghanaian family. What does this moment mean for the future of African identity and diaspora relations? This historic event marked the third such initiative under President Nana Addo Dankwa Akufo Addo's administration, reflecting Ghana's ongoing commitment to strengthening the bond between the continent and its global diaspora. President Akufo Addo, a vocal advocate of Pan Africanism, underscored the gravity of the occasion in his address poignantly stating, your ancestors left these shores in circumstances that were tragic and inhumane. Today, we embrace you as our own, as fellow citizens of this nation and as part of the Ghanaian family. How often do we get to witness such a profound reclamation of identity on a global stage? The president reminded attendees that Ghanaian citizenship represents more than a legal designation. It signifies an invitation to embody the nation's core values, respect, equity, and peace. These principles define us as a people, he declared. Today we embrace you as our own, as fellow citizens of this nation, as brothers and sisters, and as part of the Ghanaian family. And today as we grant you citizenship, we welcome you not just as visitors, but as Ghanaians, fully and forever. This ceremony is part of an ambitious narrative that Ghana began shaping during the year of return in 2019 which commemorated 400 years since the first enslaved Africans were transported to the Americas. The initiative was a catalyst for renewed global conversations about the diaspora's role in Africa's development, attracting thousands of visitors and laying the foundation for transformative connections. Can Ghana's example inspire other African nations to embrace their diaspora in equally meaningful ways? I really cannot express the feeling right now because um, what pulled me here to God is something even higher than my understanding because, you know, everything just happened, everything fell in place, and uh, right now I am so excited, yeah, and this means a lot to me. It's like my citizenship as, the, as an African has been restored. President Akufo Addo expressed optimism about the contributions these new citizens could bring to Ghana. From expertise in technology and healthcare to innovations in education and the arts, their diverse skills and global experiences are poised to fuel national development. Your presence enriches us and drives our growth, the president noted. With such high expectations, what structures are in place to ensure these contributions are effectively harnessed? The significance of this ceremony goes beyond individual achievements. It represents a seismic shift in global perceptions of Africa. President Akufo Addo aptly referred to the new citizens as human bridges connecting us across the Atlantic. Their stories dispel long-standing misconceptions about Africa, showcasing a continent brimming with unity, pride, and potential. But as misconceptions fade, how will Africa capitalize on this newfound narrative to reshape its role on the world stage? I know that you have skills, knowledge, and experiences from all corners of the world. You have excelled in fields like education, healthcare, technology, finance, the arts, sports, and more. What you bring to Ghana enriches us all. It reminds us that our potential as a nation is limitless. Your presence here is already making a difference. Your human bridges connecting us to both sides of the Atlantic. Ghana's connection to the diaspora runs deep. The country's haunting slave castles, such as Cape Coast Castle and Elmina Castle, stand as enduring symbols of a painful past. 
These UNESCO World Heritage Sites were once departure points for millions of Africans who endured the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade. For many diasporans, visiting these landmarks is a deeply emotional journey, one that confronts the legacy of slavery while honoring the resilience of their ancestors. Could there be a more fitting place for such a historic homecoming than Ghana? Ghana's leadership in Pan-Africanism, dating back to Kwame Nkrumah's visionary presidency, further underscores its significance to the diaspora. Nkrumah's call for African unity and his invitation to diasporans to return to their ancestral homeland set the tone for a welcoming environment. Today, that vision lives on as Ghana continues to offer pathways to citizenship and opportunities for economic investment. Also, the year of return in Ghana, marking 400 years since the transatlantic slave trade, was a groundbreaking initiative and the first of its kind in Africa, drawing global attention to the continent's cultural and historical significance. It fostered an unprecedented connection between Ghana and the African diaspora, welcoming thousands of descendants of enslaved Africans back to their ancestral roots. This historic event not only boosted tourism and cultural pride, but also positioned Ghana as a bridge between Africa and its global diaspora. The ceremony was more than a celebration. It was a reaffirmation of shared heritage and destiny. Quoting figures like Marcus Garvey and Peter Tosh, President Akufo Addo reminded the audience of their collective identity. Africa is your home and Ghana welcomes you with open arms. This powerful message not only resonated with the recipients, but also with millions of diasporans worldwide watching with hope and pride. Could this be the beginning of a broader movement toward reconnection and reconciliation across Africa? As the newly minted citizens celebrated their official ties to Ghana, the government pledged to remain steadfast in creating a welcoming environment for the diaspora. Policies to support investments, collaborations, and community building initiatives are already underway. The question remains, how will Ghana balance its historical obligations to the diaspora with the practicalities of modern governments? In granting citizenship to these 524 individuals, Ghana has once again positioned itself as a global beacon of African identity and unity. The ceremony was not merely an event, but a profound statement of purpose, echoing through history and into the future. In a world where identity is often fractured by geography and history, Ghana's actions remind us of the power of unity and belonging. The final question lingers. As the African diaspora continues to reconnect with the continent, how will this collective homecoming shape the future of Africa and its people? Your perspective matters. Do you think other African countries should follow Ghana's example and grant citizenship to more diaspora members? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments section below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the New Africa channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our informative future videos. So there it goes. You guys can, can um, subscribe to the New Africa channel if you wish. That's where this video came from, of course. Um, I'll, I'll say one thing about repatriation that I don't think gets talked about enough. Honestly, I, I think we need to organize repatriation. And this is why being a part of organizations, this is why organizations are good too. Like how the like how there once was the UNIA. I feel like let's use the UNIA as an example. I feel like if you live in Jamaica, the Bahamas or something, you should be a member of the UNIA and through your chapter, your home chapter, you should be talking to the chapter in the locality of, say, Ghana, let's say Ghana, where you want to go. And I think that should be organized that way. I think in that way, we can get a focus of people who are problem solvers going back to the continent, not just folks who want to go back and eat pounded yam and the goosey soup on, uh, uh, on the prairie, but folks who really... Let's get some of the people who are in some of these places. Like I can tell you in my hometown, the reason why a lot of people don't return after they finish getting an education somewhere is because there, there isn't many avenues oftentimes to really go and 
and get a job and and be a productive member of that society. Um, I think if we started to really get serious about about uh, organizations, local chapters, you know, et cetera, we should be talking through organizations and organizations should help to kind of not set you up per se, but give you some guidance, you know, teach you of some custom, you know, some rudimentary stuff on the customs, on the language, on, you know, where you could fit in and things of that nature. That's my only one issue with it. Uh, this idea of individuals just picking up and heading, uh, I don't, I kind of don't like it because what's the direction? What are you going to really do there? I mean, it's good for you on an individual level to reconnect, perhaps re-Africanize, and just to get out of the West, period. That's great. But we need some problem solvers too, I think. Um, with that said, let me see. Where should I start this time? Let me start with forecasts. Forecasts. Ghana just granted hundreds of diasporan citizenship. Does this spell disaster or a boost for the country? What are your thoughts? Um, well, first of all, um, I, you said you took like, you know, how I was feeling and said it because how I feel about this, you know, first of all, like even the fact that it shows our mindset, the fact that we even on here and somebody sent this to you. And the first thing they after saw after seeing this video was like, does this spell disaster or a boost? Like the first thing is like, oh, does this spell disaster? Like what the that shows our mindset, first of all. But um, I agree. That's what I was feeling when I seen this. Like, yo, I, I think it's a great thing. But, like, it's time. It's, like, a little late in the game that we not moving with, like, intentions. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if like, it seems like this is, like, on some survival. Well, I ain't going to say on this. But, like, a lot of stuff that we do seems to be more symbolic as opposed to moving with intentions. Like, what is the plan behind, and like, we're gonna do this so that this boosts this and we can put it back into here. And this is the plan but behind all of the things that we're talking about. You know, everything that we do now, it can't just be like symbolic as, oh, we're just showing this gesture of love and we can just get back together. Um, you know, it's like, it start, it's, comes down to start having plans, you know? Cause even this video made me think about it. like like Europeans, like Neanderthals, whatever you want to call them, they're probably more aware of what's going on in all of these countries than we are, you know, and especially about some repatriation. And the first thing they're they going to put in there is it's going to spell disaster for y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what they want you to think. But if we ain't, because they're everything that they're doing, like they're moving with the plan to stay on the top where they are, you know. And if we're not moving with the plan, then it's just useless. It's just 500 more people that's in the country, which could be good or bad, you know what I'm saying? But if it's for like 524 people for a specific plan that we have to ex, like, yo, this is a specific thing that we're doing, as opposed to just like, yo, I don't know, it's a sign of symbolism. Uh, well, you know, I'm just saying the same thing over. So, you know, that's all I'm saying. It just seems like uh, we need to start moving with intentions as opposed to just um, doing stuff. So I'll pass the mic. Yeah, respect to that forecast. I agree. In the chat, Trigabi said, diaspora is coming in to contribute to commerce is good. It just needs to be organized on a political level. Laro says, the problem are these neocolonial states or leaders and in a way, acts like these legitimize them, which goes against the work of those who have always lived there and impacts outside perception. Lero goes on to say, not every, and honestly, not most of those of us who repatriate understand fully what is going on and going wrong in these nations. There's cultural consciousness, but no political consciousness. Trigapi says, I would say the cultural consciousness could be better too. Some complain about repatriation, but don't speak the language. It needs to be understood that these languages are their languages as well. He says, uh, that's what Obadale Kambon is doing. Just needs to be a bigger scale. That should have always been the intention of repatriation. Anything else would have its faults. Uh, Trigger goes on to say Obadale Kambon uh, has content on this recent citizenship grant for the diaspora on a BB Toomey TV, so check it out. So you guys check it out 
on a BB to me uh, TV. Uh, he goes on to say, every repatriate or potential repatriate before coming to the continent should learn an African language before they are granted. That can help too. I'll continue with the comments in a sec in a second, but uh, Cheryl made a made a point earlier. She said that her husband was at this same function. So congrats to Cheryl and her husband on that. Um, she says in every nation there are problems, but that's why we need to be there to change things. She said my husband was there, and I can tell you the majority of people there have real skills that can contribute to the economy. Uh, so that's good to that's good to know. That's good to know that there was at least that consideration when they did it. That's 500, almost 600 people, I think, was there. So that's really good to know. Um, with that said, let me go to Black Steel. Black Steel, Ghana just granted hundreds of diasporan citizenship. Does this spell disaster or boost for the economy? What say you? I think it's a boost for the economy. I think it's good when Black African people connect with, with each other, right? We, this, the, our enemy has spent so long trying to separate us and divide us that whenever I see Black people, you know, go back to, to the motherland and get citizenship or create businesses, it makes me happy because we are one people. I think sometimes we forget about that. We, we're scattered. We got reactionary elements within our community. But at the end of the day, we're Africans, right? Our ancestors come from the same place and we should organize and connect with one another because that's where our that's where our salvation lies. It doesn't lie in in the separation. It lies in unity, which is why our enemy has always been so hell bent on keeping us divided. And I think that's a lesson to learn that whatever you think, I think it was. I think it was Mao who said whatever your enemy supports, you oppose whatever your enemy opposes, you support. And because our enemy opposes Pan-Africanism, we should support it, <laughs> you know? I think that's something that we we lose sight of sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, uh, these people are bringing skills and, and, and know-how and other things to the economy. And as long as they don't displace the, the people of Ghana who are already there, as long as they're integrated into society without having to displace or remove anybody from their home or anything like that, I think it's a good thing. And I think that other African nations should uh, expand their program because let's get real here. Let's be just keep it a buck. It's gonna get real bad real fast. We might need to skedaddle, and we might need some place to skedaddle too. So I'm all for being able to fall back to a to a, a location of safety, um, a location where we can regroup, or reorganize. Cause yeah. Is going to get real bad real soon. I, it, the potential has always been there, but I think as we're seeing a, a renaissance of white supremacist violence uh, in the U.S. and other Western countries, like France, Great Britain, all these countries are falling back to their fascist roots. Africa is going to need to stand united because we're really all we got. So I'll leave it there. Thank you. Appreciate that, Black Seal. Just to be clear, I'm not assuming that the folks going back have bad intentions that that's not that that's not my i don't think anyone is really trying to say that i'm just saying that uh i'm just saying that it'll be good if it was organized so that everyone knows where they fit in when they go i saw afro think tank talk about this not too long ago actually and he was he was issuing a warning to people who are repatriating. He was saying, "Don't come and undermine the Africans." So, for example, let's say you're out here in California and you're looking to go back. You're good with textiles or whatever. Or you have a you have you have a, uh, an idea of a textile business, but when you go there, you undermine everyone. Who had a textile business there? So instead of them being their independent selves, and you come then kind of put them out of business, now they got to work for you. Like that's the kind of thing I'm really trying to guard against, and I, that's why I say it needs to be organized, right? We go there, and, and, and again, a person who does that probably didn't have any bad or ill intention, but because it wasn't organized, 
in a particular way, uh, according to particular customs and the politics in that nation, blah, blah, blah. You know, you inadvertently go there and you might, you know, someone who had one sewing machine, that's what they could have afforded. You end down there with with uh, with 25 sewing machines that you got from the States here and took down. You know what I mean? Or you, you end down there with a bunch of cloth. You know, whatever it is. And you just completely messed up their little business and stuff like that. that that's the thing I'm kind of guarding against. And on top of that, too, I think we need some heavy some heavy hitters, some heavy hitters in terms of science and engineering and things of that nature. Too. I think we need to organize those types of people to go down to the continent and, and help and help uh, fortify any nation that's there. Uh, with that said, let me hear from Anthony McPhail. Anthony, what's to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going? On? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, hey, I think it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, I was checking it out, man. Oh, uh, I, uh, I checked that on uh, YouTube. I was looking at the whole ceremony, but I'm like, I'm like you for like you, uh, Koku. You don't want to go there and do a Liberia 2.0 thing. You know what I'm saying? Like when they had, you know, with uh, you know what happened in Liberia, you know, and uh, with the relationship between the descendants of enslaved Africans who came back and set up Liberia, you know, and the relationship that they had with the indigenous people, you know, you don't want to have that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like you said, you don't want to undermine them. I mean, I, 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 exactly what you're talking about. I want to say this. Okay, regardless, okay, like I say, it was a beautiful thing, the whole ceremony, regardless of what you think about uh, Nana Kofu or uh, Aldo. Because uh, I noticed that they called him a Pan-Africanist. He's not a Pan-Africanist. <laughs> no, he's a stool pigeon for the West. You know what I'm saying? Who, who pretends to be a Pan-Africanist. You know what I'm saying? But uh, what I'm saying is, there is, you, Koku, you talking about the organization for it. Okay, they have in Ghana on the ground uh, uh, this organization called the, the African-American Organization of Ghana. And, it, and they, like, help facilitate, you know, uh, brothers and sisters who want to repatriate to Ghana. So, I mean, they, they do have an organization on the ground to kind of help them you know to ease in in that situation. But the brother who I like to talk about, man, who I like to uh, uh, hip y'all to, is his brother in Sierra Leone. And his name is uh, Masare Fode. Fode Masare. He's a, uh, he's a brother. He's from, uh, he's, from, he's from New York City. Growing up in New York City, he's from South Carolina. Gullah, a Gullah man. And he has a, he's a, he's a Garveyite. And he has an organization called the Black Star Network. The Black Star Network. And he's been in Sierra Leone for probably about 10, 12 years. And uh, you, you can catch him on YouTube. But uh, he has an organization that also does the same thing. And his is a more, it's a more, you know, it's a more of a, uh, like I said, he's a Garveyite. You know, so it goes more along Garveyite lines. So, you know, you can check him out. I think, hey, what, if I, what I do, uh, Koku, I'll send it to you later on tonight after the show. But I, I don't know if I sent you something before about him. But yeah, he's he's a Garveyite. And he and his organization is called the Black Star Network. And they help facilitate, you know, brothers and sisters from America and from the Caribbean and from all parts of the diaspora who wants to come back home. You know, to the to the motherland. You know, they facilitate it and they educate them on all kind of things, you know, the local, you know, the local uh, the, the environment, you know, and customs and everything and culture languages and all of that but yeah uh yeah, I mean, I, like i said i think it's a beautiful thing man especially you know if they could if you go in there for the right reasons like you say you don't want to go there to try to be another colonizer you know to go there like to undermine the local people you want to go and blend in the culture you know because you know you're african now you're on the continent you know you want to blend with the people and uh yeah i mean i think it's I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. You know, I mean, a lot of people, I think that some people do it for, I, it, it, it could, some people can look at it as a symbolic thing, but it ain't all that though. It ain't just symbolic. You know, a lot of people do it simple for the right reasons. You know what I'm saying? For the right reasons. And, they'll, you know, and, and, and to do it, like Akon said, whatever you do in America, come over here to Africa do it. And there's a lot of people following that kind of program who are doing it, like Idris Elba doing it. No, he's he he about to uh, start a lot of stuff over there, you know, in West Africa, you uh, know. So I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, like I said, as long as it's done, everything's done for the right reason. 
No, I agree with it. More power to it. I mean, that's my dream to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's my dream to do it. I'll knock out right there, man. I won't take too much time. No, no, no. You, 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 you were good. You were good. Um, Lero says because isn't that a lot of the appeal? You can go to Africa and get your dignity back. Repatriation is framed as a feel-good thing and not as a political, economic endeavor. And that, that's really what I'm talking about. Cheryl, I'm not saying that that's – I'm not saying that the people in this audience are going back to undermine and that's what's happening. But let's be honest, the human condition, especially the way we've been conditioned in the West with the rugged individualism mindset, you know there's some people who will do that. They'll land somewhere and they'll just find an opportunity that undermines some of the folks there. But I get your point. Um, she says that, Cheryl says that Ghana is a very, very Christian nation to the point that they punish and criticize their own people for speaking their native languages in school. See, that's not good. Uh, Lero says, and how can it be? This is to continue her previous thought. You can't openly criticize the nation you're emigrating to, can you? So to get in good graces, you have to legitimize these leaders, which goes against the interests of the people. Trigapi. 262 plus says, yeah, repatriation is only framed as escaping racism and not building where we have a population dominance and our potential power base. Uh, well said. I appreciate all the comments. Keep them coming. Uh, last one I'll read. Cheryl says, Ghana undermines themselves by not making their native languages mandatory in their universities. Trigger, what are your thoughts on that? Because you're from... Your good name. So what, what what are your thoughts on the fact that the languages there uh uh have not been made the 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 language of the nation? You know, uh what are your thoughts on that? Uh with that said, last but not least, Bonnie, you've heard everything that everyone else had to say, what say you? Yeah, a few things. A few things, Coco. So there was a there was a online movement that suggested that Pan Africanism Pan Africanism was dead, and the counter to that is what I saw what Trump did. So Trump practices Pan Europeanism on a, on a stage like no other. For instance, if you look at many of the members of cabinet that he ins he's gonna install, many of them are so called quote unquote tethers non-foundational white Americans, non-foundational white Americans, tethers from another country. So this is, this is in response to that. This is a big middle finger. This is a big middle finger because we see what the black, what black, blacks from around the world are actively doing. 500 plus um, diasporan from the West showing their support and, and love to trying to, to have some collectivity on the continent itself. Now, the, this is not a, sim, well, for some, it may be symbolic, but if you look at this video itself, you would see Dr. Gina Page in this, in the same video, Dr. Gina Page. People say, who Dr. Gina Page is? If you all know what African ancestry for the DNA stuff, all that DNA stuff, she was in this actual video. She is a scientist, a geneticist. This is something that Ghana probably needs, probably needs and could use her expertise. And I'm sure there are many other people like her on the, in this audience. And they say, well, listen, if our skill set is not appreciated in one country, why do we have to just use that skill set in one country? Let, let's, let me spread and give back my skill set to another country. Maybe they may be able to appreciate my skill set. To have a geneticist, par excellence in a, on a continent, in a, in a country in Africa, she is useful. And I'm sure there are many other people like her. So for me, this is just a brilliant exercise. I, I personally think that there could be some good and bad, bad to, well, there's going to be, because there's a distance, a culture, and conditioning. You know, you're coming from other parts of the world, coming to reacclimate yourself within this particular society, homogenous society. So it's going to be a whole lot of <laughs> ism and schism, I bet. I bet it's going to be an ism and schism. It'll take time to develop some, some continuity, but the fact that it's actually being actively tried 
actively being tried by by the by our brothers and sisters in in the West coming by from or wherever they coming from, trying to reacclimate themselves on the continent, West African people coming together collectively. I applaud this. I applaud this. I do think that there will be some isms and schisms for a time, but I think that we're gonna iron out the kinks and that, and we're gonna eventually come back to to doing our own thing. Black Africa, despite the fact that online they say it's not the future, it is absolutely the future. It is absolutely the future. Just as if when you disturb water and you have a ripples in the water itself, after a while it comes back to its its smoothness. Yeah, you know, it's continuity. So I think that this these are we are just a family coming back home to reassert ourselves and our and our blackness and our Africanness on the continent to be a power, a global power in the world. It's gonna happen. Whether the anti Pan Africanists or the anti Africans want to ignore it or pretend as if it don't exist. It's gonna happen whether y'all like it or not. And like I say, just as some just like the president practicing pan-Europeanism, because he ain't hired no blackface, despite the fact that the tap tap dances. They've been tap dancing all over the place. They ain't get no black jobs for them. <laughs> he say, Donald Trump say, I can practice pan-Europeanism. No problem. No problem. But let us practice our pan-Africanism. You don't hear it on the internet at all. They, people become as quiet as a church mouse. So I, I, I applaud this, and I, I say big respect to the brothers and sisters who are actively making a step, taking a step towards practicing Pan-Africa, Pan-Africanism around the world. We are a global force and we are coming. We are coming. You know, despite the fact that people want to ignore us, pretend we don't exist, we are coming in the world. So, you know, bravo to them. I'll leave it at that, Coco. Any other last thoughts on this, um, Trump? Lero in the chat says, facts, those in motion move the needle. Uh, let me just read a couple of things Trigger had to say, because, again, he is Ghanaian, I want, and I asked a question. He said, the issue is tribalism and neocolonialism. English is seen as more scientific. People don't want to speak one language either, despite Twi being 80% spoken. He said, the solution is simple. All African languages are related. The emphasis on their relation to me is what will help in making the languages legitimate in administration. He says, also, this isn't an excuse to me. Repatriates will benefit in learning the language. You gain a net positive that way instead of sticking to English. Uh, instead, uh, He goes on to say, this is why Camjaverse content is also important, by the way. Paleo-African linguistics will help in making it clear that African languages are related and can be spoken across the board. Yeah, I have some... Um, Camdiverse videos. I have some other prompts from others I need to put up in the coming weeks. And I, in fact, I have some prompts I put up that I haven't put forward yet. Um, but the Cam, the thing with Camdiverse is the videos are kind of long. And I don't know if playing them in double speed or whatever would take away from its impact. So I'll, I'll check it out and I'll see. Um, if there's no final thoughts, let's move to Shoot a Breeze topic number five tonight. We'll make an excellent time tonight. I want to thank everyone who's out here with us in the chat. Please keep the comments going from the chat. Uh, please keep the comments coming from the chat. And uh, the panelists, you guys are doing wonderful as well. Um, Lero says, okay, Buana with the motivation. Uh, she says, we are coming on my granny kids, LMA. Oh, Cheryl says, when white people go back and Chinese people, there's no tribalism from the locals. I wonder why this is why we need to be there to counteract the BS. And that I can't fight. I can't fight that logic. It's better to go back not than not to go back. Let's be clear about it. Um, I just want to make sure that we're going back and being useful when we do. 